Today on The Flush, it's a high school reunion of sorts. We hunt with lifelong friends that turn their love of hunting and pheasants forever into land ownership. Right in front of us, Bergie. And more. Who's that? Nice shot, Bergie. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. How does the old saying go? Home is where the heart is, or something like that. For Steve Berg, Jeff Stryker, Rob and Todd Beyer, and me, our hearts go back to where we grew up, a place called Eden Prairie. At the time, Eden Prairie was a small but growing suburb west of Minneapolis. And for some reason, the town and the people left an imprint on many of us. Back then, athletics and an occasional party in the woods was the common denominator. Now, it's following our bird dogs and chasing wild pheasants. It's the week after Thanksgiving, and we're gonna do a little late season pheasant hunt in western Minnesota with some old friends of mine that I grew up with. And they've got a little pheasant oasis just before you get to South Dakota that generally holds late season birds, and it's kind of late season conditions right now. I'm looking forward to kind of catching up with old friends and hunting in the snow. Hunting in the snow is fun. You get to follow a few tracks and uh, watch the dogs do their things, which is always fun. Hey! What's a good word, Franny? Up here, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hank, lots of girl dogs. You're going to love this. As Hank gets acquainted with his female host, bring this beer in. we quickly unload the rigs. God, this is nice. No time to admire the digs now. We need to get our boots and blades because sunset comes in a hurry this time of year. And there are roosters calling. Steve, what are we gonna start hunting first? And is there pheasants? Because I didn't drive all this way yeah. just to walk. <laughs> like I said, guarantee a long walk and beer's always cold. That's the only guarantee I ever promise out here. We're just gonna head a little bit uh, south. And around the edge of slough, we'll start heading west to the little food plot. Do we think the sloughs will hold up skinny guys like you and me? <laughs> Let's hunt. Okay, let's go, come on. I heard some cackling and they all were going right over here. Why don't you shoot them? Before we can relive the high school glory days, birds start popping. Hen, hen, hen! Here, Hank. Hen, hen, hen! He's real hot here. They're moving. Okay, Hank, come on. Oh, here goes one. Well, they're out there, just can't get to them, Franny. Sometimes it just takes a good scolding from your cameraman to snap you into action. Wait, we to quit farting around and... I know, shoot a bird. Down. All right, well, let's get, let's get Hank in this thick shit here. He's hot here. Where is he, Hank? Who's there? Boy, Hank. Good boy, Hangers. Boy, did he hold tight. Yeah, no kidding. Whoo! Good shot. 
Oh, we're off to Schneid. Good boy, Hank. That was fun to watch him. Well, they, they worked that one hard. I kind of wish, Kyle, that I wouldn't have had that extra helping of gravy and stuffing on Thanksgiving now. Weighing you down. Not quite as nimble as I normally am. Whoa! Shit. Woo. Yeah, just a little wet. Take a nip. Oh, God, yep. Not even wet feet can put a damper on a sunset hunt. I love this time, especially out in the prairie. Boy, he's hot in there. Tracks all over in here. Get it, Hank. Get it. Hen, hen, good boy. Good boy. That's a lot of birds. Coming up, different day, different piece of land, same theme. Where there is habitat, there are birds. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition, every shot counts. Waltons, everything but the meats. Benelli. And by Nutrisource. Sometimes, when things get a little crazy in life, you just need a little home cooking. For Jeff and Steve, when they need a little home cooking, they get their fill right here at their farm. It started in 99, 1999. We started out here with you know, no running water, no bathrooms, pop-up campers, back ends of Suburbans. That's what got it started, you know, and you're all with your buddies and guys we grew up with. In my case, from grade school years. So I've known those guys all through high school, but we really got to know each other through, through hunting. We decided that it was time to uh, reinvest and, and get this Morton building that had collapsed, rebuilt, and that was really the beginning of the fellowship that we've had for probably 18 of these 20 years. Hunting has kind of kept us together. A love for hunting often goes hand in hand with another love. And then I also love just the conservation part of it, seeing the changes seeing the trees that we planted 20 years ago that were up to my knee now are 10, 12 feet tall. Seeing the food plots, seeing the change. We did a big burn this, this spring. The conservation part of it is really, really big for me. Belly's full. It's time to start hunting. This time, we drive a short distance to hunt a piece of property that Rob owns. There's a little drainage ditch right there. That's where I got one up a couple days ago. All that over there is all the new CRP. I was just wondering, where are the ones that are like kind of tied down? <laughs> do you have your, your pheasant call? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to work, yeah. It sure looks like someone else is excited for today's hunt. Oh. <laughs> All right, boys, hunt safe. Nice December morning. Look at the tracks. Just as Rob predicted, the birds start popping up in his new CRP. I've owned for about 10 or 12 years now. I bought it and uh, it had a little CRP in it. It's 160 acres. 
And this last year I developed 75 more acres, I planted 3,000 trees, put in more CRP. And it's a pretty special piece of ground because it's really close to a golf course. And my two favorite sports now are pheasant hunting and golfing. So in the, when it's nice out, we'll shoot our birds and go play some golf. Right in front of us, Briggs. We got one. We didn't lose any balls today. <laughs> nope. No golf balls lost today, Rob. You lost a hunter and a dog. Just your brother and his dog. Not a bad way to start the day. Coming up, it's more snow, sloughs, and, and birds. Oh, here we go. The Flush is brought to you by Peasants Forever. Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice. North Dakota Tourism. And by Rufflin Performance Kennels. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. For me, and for many reasons, I just love late season hunting. First, the challenge. There they go. By late season, the birds are smart, wary, and tough to hunt. Birds are leaking out on the right. Watching, learning, and planning your hunt are keys. Some heavy, heavy strategery going on up there. He's using his hands a lot. He's gesturing a lot. That means he's very excited about something. Second, no crowds. That's okay with us. There's no fat pheasant hunters this time of year because you know we're walking two miles in snow. A lot of hunters call the season when the temperature drops, there's snow on the ground, and the birds head to the cattails. Oh, right, and Lastly, when you bust through snow and cattails all day, the feeling of accomplishment you get with just a bird or two is hard to beat. Now, the plan. We're getting ready for our afternoon hunt. There's a corn food plot up here on Steve and Jeff's land that we're gonna push to the north. We had Rob and Todd go beyond it, and they're walking around it, and they're gonna block behind some cedar trees up there. So we're gonna kinda make a sneak attack. Ready, set, and go. There they go. Who's that? Nice shot, Bernie. Slew right up kind of over the hill here. What was I saying about the cattails earlier? Great shot. Good girl, Faith. Faith is Jeff's three and a half year old black lab. What she lacks in size, she makes up in passion and desire. She is a gamer. When hunting, it is full speed ahead. This afternoon, Faith was in all of her glory. Find it. Oh, here we go. Right here. Get up. God. You gotta be kidding me. No joke here, Jeff. Good girl, Faith. Faith is the real deal. But so is Steve's dog, Cy. 
Psy, Steve's three-year-old yellow lab, is what you might call a two-sport athlete. Well, I started tournament hunting 15 years ago, and the reason I got into it, because the season, you know, Minnesota pheasant season ended in December, so it kept me and my dogs off the couch. It sounds like Cy didn't spend too much time on the couch. When she was a puppy, she won the BDC, the bird dog challenge. So she won the national champion. And then the next year she went on to the pro division and her first year running pro as a dog under you know, three years old, she won the national champion. So she's won back-to-back -back national championships at three years of age. Even hunting champions need to have a hobby. Right, Cy? She's probably the smartest, dumbest dog I've ever had. Extremely intelligent, but just a goofy, and even at three years old, she's still so a big puppy. In fact, she's on America's Funniest Videos a couple weeks ago. Oh, Dad. She's trying to catch the mulch. She's uh, eccentric, as we say. Hey, I think you're done, Sai. Sai, you're done. <laughs> Coming up. We find out the not so secret recipe for all the birds. Pheasants Forever's mission remains to protect and restore America's wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today, and your membership will help us to create healthy habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Please help us make a difference today that will last forever. It is no accident that we have seen literally hundreds of pheasants in early December in Minnesota. Rooster! As landowners, Steve, Jeff, and Rob believe in one simple philosophy. Habitat, I mean, it's, there's, there's really no other answer to it really besides just the improvement of habitat. But what's the most important thing? I mean, it, it, that's what it is. Somehow, some way, we have to find ways to continue to teach the younger kids the importance of it. If we keep taking it away, all this stuff that we've been able to enjoy our whole life will disappear quickly. Head, head, head! If you look at this part of Minnesota, there's a ton of public, there's a lot of walk-in areas, and, and they're concerned about habitat. Pineberg. And if you're an upland bird hunter, hunt them up. What is the best way to support habitat? I've been a lifetime member of Pheasants Forever, probably almost 20 years. I was telling you about that piece of ground I bought up by the border, and I developed that, you know, and sold it to Pheasants Forever. From the time I engaged them to the time I closed was less than 30 days, and then they developed it, and now it's public land for everybody to enjoy. Fire Wildlife Management Area. <laughs> It really is our core group of high school guys. We have a great passion for pheasant hunting and also conservation. And we didn't have a chapter. We were always going to different chapters, McLeod County. And we just said, well, why don't we start one right here while well, we have the motivation to go out and be involved in pheasants forever. A passion for hunting, habitat, and conservation. Sounds like the perfect recipe. See that little, little tree line right there? Yep. So we want to kind of stay to the left of it. Those guys are come up, push it, and then we see them, we'll, we'll get down a little closer to it. Okay. Let's go. Booster! The game plan was too perfect. It wasn't ready. Oh, Franny, you gave me a layup. Sorry. No worries, Steve. Even the best of us miss a layup every once in a while. It's been snowy, icy. I mean, the birds reacted the way we thought they were. They're wily, you know, they're smart. You know, it just it was hard hunting. It's December and that's what you get. The other thing you get is the occasional great shot. Yeah, he's hot. Oh, Rooster! Nice shot! 
That was a big one there. So you tell me, what is a late season hunt with old friends worth? Priceless, because no one will ever know how much fun we've had out here. <laughs> but there's truly, when you say friends, there's truly friendship amongst these five people from five different classes. It's really cool now that I reflect on the question that we had five guys from five classes that are truly friends. And when we talk about buddies, it's not just those of the two-legged variety that are appreciated at this hunting camp. The dogs, my gosh, you know, we have a wall of fame in our, in our house and there's, I think, 16 17 on there now that have hunted for us passionately in front of us. I mean, that, that's the greatest thing we ever did. Well, these are our warriors. This is our wall of fame. Steve Berg came up with the idea several years ago, and unfortunately, we keep adding to it, but that's all part of the experience. I just love this because, you know, any hunter can relate to the bond between their dog and them and, and, and their group. And for you guys that have a group of guys and a group of dogs, what a wonderful way to honor your hunting buddies. It's 20 years of great memories is what it, it is. It, it's unbelievable. I mean, we could tell stories for seven days about each one of these dogs. Well, I bet you do. I bet you come and after a a good hunt, you have a couple of beers, and then the stories start flowing. That, well, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, we've got nothing but good memories sitting on this wall, and proud to honor them. 20 years of memories with high school buddies, warrior dogs, conservation, habitat, chasing wild pheasants. Oh, here we go. Priceless indeed. Mm -hmm.